Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today I want to talk a little bit about the dev diary that came out yesterday. There's a lot of great things to talk about with this dev diary, a lot of updates that people don't really know about. When I'm talking about nerfs, buffs, and so much more when it comes to the actual game itself, whether it's the roadmap update, weapon balance, territory control, or even crafting. So I took down a ton of notes myself, but I also have some notes from other people like Bogus in the comment section of New World. We have people from New World subreddit and others as well that have contributed to this list. So I'm going to go through, make a quick overview of what you should know and what you need to know for this next updates or updates coming. Uh, but the first thing we have is postponing leaderboards. We saw that leaderboards were on the list for this roadmap, and they just aren't here yet. And we expected them to kind of be here by now, or very, very soon. And I think they are still coming very, very soon. They just want to make sure the leaderboards are working properly as intended. So do expect leaderboards to take just a little bit longer. The new expedition is coming. It's going to be a unique mix of Amrine and Starstone. They joked about maybe... Uh, what, did he, what did he say? Star, Star Mine? I think he joked about putting Star Mine as the name for the expedition. I don't see that coming. I think they are going to come up with a different name. They didn't seem to love the idea of Star Mine when he mentioned it in the dev diary. So for that reason, uh, a mix of Amrine and Starstone. We'll just keep it at that. Winter Convergence event in December. This is going to be huge. A lot of people excited about more and more events coming to New World. Well, Winter Convergence is coming in December. Sandworm and Brimstone will be a raid boss that is coming to PTR soon. It is intended to be extremely, extremely difficult. She said in the, uh, the lady said in the dev diary that it's going to be one of those things that they want to be almost impossible for players to do. You know, very, very difficult, basically. So expect that. We have cross-server OPRs coming soon. And by the way, cross-server OPRs will lead to cross-server instances. So expect arenas, hopefully, to follow in form there. And then maybe even expeditions or anything of those sorts with instances. Cross-server is a huge, huge deal. I want people to realize how big cross-server coming to this game is. Gear set management is also coming. That's absolutely massive for this game. We knew about it last Dev Diary, but they talked about it even more, and they are continuing to work on this. Progress is coming in big waves with gear set management. So expect a way to quickly take off all your gear and put on a different set or a different uh, you know, set pieces that you need to put on for gathering, crafting, PvE, PvP, whatever else. We get to the next one. It's going to be transmog. It's a work in progress. Hang on to any armors that you want to transmog. So if there's any really, really cool armors that you like, the way they look, hang on to them as you'll need those to actually transmog some of your specific items to look like others. That's going to be a very, very cool and give us kind of that uh, display of... You know, what we want to look like is going to be so much easier now than just, you know, equipping whatever you can fit on you and then using skins to make yourself look cool. Creator campaign will occur simultaneously with the Fresh Start servers. So there's going to be a return of Eternum, which we talked about a little bit before with this video specifically. But return of Eternum is going to be a big deal. We'll talk about that more after this video as well. So we have weapon balance as well. This is going to be a big one for a lot of us, whether it's the weapon nerfs or the weapon buffs. We will be moving heavy handed with balance in the future to prevent weapons from getting out of hand. So the big thing here is they're reducing stamina damage of musket. This is their solution to muskets on the mountain. But that's not all. They're also nerfing the damage when it comes to range. They think they're going to take off fall off or crate, sorry, fall off damage. So let's say at 200 meters, you do 3000 damage. At 300 meters, you do 1500 damage. At 400 meters, you do a uh, thousand damage obviously that's a very rough estimate and that's probably not even close to what it actually is going to be but to just give you an example the farther away you are the less damage you're going to do in general is the idea of muskets because you don't want to nerf them to the ground obviously although some of you probably do uh, muskets do deserve a little bit of a spot of course in these OPRs and in the arenas as well so flamethrower will be nerfed. Mana consumption will be significantly increased. When you turn on your flamethrower, you're going to notice you turned on the flamethrower because your mana bar is going to be depleted pretty heavily. Also, the viability of blocking, stamina damage is being looked at right now, and they are going to actually make the viability of blocking much, much better. So if you're a person that likes to use the great sword or the hammer and you know sword and shield and all these tankier weapons, you're going to be able to block much better here in the near future with some of the viability changes coming to blocking. So blocking in group combat is being looked at as well. They also intend to make OPR a little more melee oriented. They really want blocking to be more important in fights where there are many ranged opponents. And their solution appears to be blocking. They also love having snipers in OPR. 
They just know, you know, it's a little overtuned right now. So they will remain, you know, giving that spotlight to muskets and bows in OPR is my assumption as well. So I do think, you know, how do you have melee? How do you have snipers? Well, you know, what I think is going to really happen here is mages are going to kind of get the back burner. We're not going to see mages used near as much if they continue to buff up melee. Also loving the, the idea of snipers in OPR. I think mages could have a rough little spot in the next couple of patches. Looking at how scoring works in OPR to incentivize players not to stat pad with bows and muskets, so stat padding in OPR maybe not going to be the case anymore. There's no plans to add a group finder for OPR or arena. I do hope they change that. I like the idea of being able to search as a DPS and finding a group with a healer and a tank if that's what you're looking for, but you know, it's not a big deal. I think you can find most people right now in recruitment chat or you have buddies you can search solo with and make friends doing solo queues and eventually, like I said, come into that pre-made status. So next up, they have territory control. When you leave a company, there will be a three-day cooldown before you can join a war. There's war fatigue coming soon as well, limiting the number of wars a single person can do in a day. This will be account-wide, by the way. They will be adding time windows to territory influence. So in an attempt to drive players to these zones, let's say you, know, you have a four-hour period, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., this area will be open. And that means that people will be able to go over there and push those influences in these territories at those times. And by the way, four control points will control the amount of influence generated. So there's going to be a multiplier added, or you can actually control more than one four in a territory at a time. They're going to be adding more control points, by the way, it sounds like. So let's say there's four or five of these, and you control all four or five. It's going to be a very, very fast push compared to what it was previously. Also, intention is reduced the amount of time to required to push influence. So that's their intention of, you know, adding more four control points is control all four of these, push fast, push hard, but it won't take you five hours anymore. It'll take you maybe a half hour. That's kind of the intention if you're able to actually just stomp out your opponents and go pushing very, very quickly. And the cool thing is, is the defense people won't have to, you know, be active 24 hours of the day defending. They can defend just that window, that little slight four hour, five hour, six hour, whatever they decide window, and just continue to hold their tor territory just occasionally on those time frames. So it's very cool as well. Practice wars are coming, but not on the roadmap right now. So don't expect practice wars to come too soon, but they are on the way and they're working on it. Crafting is next in line. New trade skills will be added soon. Nothing specific to say about it yet. No plans to improve how recipes work and can be seen in the UI, but there are plans to increase the depth of crafting. But really, they don't have much to say about that quite yet, but a very, very exciting kind of look into what is coming. New zones, by the way, will most likely be smaller than Brimstone. New zones may be also split up into smaller areas inside of one zone. So you didn't see that much with Brimstone. You just saw a massive, vast desert and that's exactly why it's because it's a desert they get a vast territory all kind of compacted together but i do expect huge huge things to come like i said with some of these new zones they they talked about they might be a little bit smaller more ebb and scale reek water size more areas in these different kinds of zones so maybe different kinds of creatures different kinds of nodes to farm different kinds of just landscape in general big focus on open world pvp though is what i'm hearing with the timing windows coming from you know gaining or generating that influence so that's exciting stuff for sure i'm going to look through some of the stuff i noted now to make sure i didn't miss anything uh they are avoiding the 2 a.m pushes with the you know those like i said those windows of times where you can push they're trying to just give people a chance to defend you know before you pretty much never got to defend because it was a 24-hour period that you could be pushed but i expect more pvp because of that and raids are coming, like I said, to the PTR soon. Not too soon. I would expect, you know, a couple months. But it's going to be very, very hard to beat. The Sandworm boss is going to be the first one. It's going to be more than five players. We already knew most of this stuff. I'm going to go over some stuff that we did know already. So gear score scaling straight to 600 in Arena. So if you have a buddy that just hit fresh level 60 and they have 520 gear score, those gear scores are going to be bumped up to 600 when they enter an Arena, which is very, very nice. You know, there's really no reason for them to keep them at 520. They just get absolutely stomped in Arenas, and now they have a fighting chance. I love to see the transparency and changes coming with some of these updates coming in the near future. The idea of transmog, the idea of cross-server, the events coming up, raids coming up, new expeditions, weapon balancing, it's all going to be very, very good for the game. And another thing I wanted to kind of mention here quickly is they know that the rapier is in a rough spot. It's too strong as a kind of evade weapon. I bet they take changes to make it more of an aggressive weapon because that was their initial push is to try to make it more of a damage, 
more of a, an assassin type build. So I expect them, like I said, to take away some of that mobility to get away, but add some damage to do more of an aggressive style with the rapier. So we'll see what happens. So we'll see what happens, but a lot of great stuff overall today. Uh, a lot of cool stuff overall today. We also knew about the pre-made queues being, you know, you can search as three mans against other three mans, and then solo duo queue is kind of separated when it comes to arena. So that's another great thing they kind of mentioned today as well, but we already knew. Um, but a lot of great stuff overall, and I wanted to just kind of mention everything, all the updates today, a lot of good stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.